ever since that slap at the kickoff press conference of WrestleMania, you know, week after week after week, we've been getting, you know, good updates, shocking moments, all, all revolving around Cody versus the bloodline, Seth there, all that. But this week, we really didn't get anything too shocking as far as like a revelation or all that or what's going on did wwe put a pause on the biggest storyline they have going into wrestlemania and if they did is that really such a bad thing let's get into it so starting off not gonna bury the lead yes i personally think they they took a not like a super duper pause not like just not recognize it but as far as any like developments going on i don't think nothing really happened this week for like cody versus the bloodline it probably has a lot to do with because the rock wasn't there this week but no stipulation no revelation nothing we didn't already expect we did get a basically for all intents and purposes a rated r promo for from cody on raw saying calling and i quote the rock is an asshole and rock has little dick syndrome on national tv but you know we had that on raw and on uh smacked it on friday there was a roman cody face to face that if we're being honest really didn't amount to much we did get the visual of roman jimmy paul and solo standing across from jay seth cody even though Roman and Cody both said they were coming alone. So now they're both liars. We did get that visual, a visual we frankly assume we're going to see. And we'll probably get it again with The Rock thrown in there somewhere between now and Mania, which at the time this recording is like two weeks away. Um, but like, yeah, like I said, nothing major happened. Nothing that is a, oh my gosh. Maybe some of Cody's colorful language is a, oh my gosh, but nothing too out of ordinary with all that being said here's why i think that's a good thing because uh because if you have been watching especially on smackdown with the rock there the first quarter to a third of the show is taken up by the rock or roman or all that kind of stuff you know it's been said on online and i've seen it too that the rest of the show feels rushed because the rock is basically uh is it carte blanche carte blanche carte blanche basically a blank check to do whatever it wants and then the rest of the show is kind of filled in between there now that uh this past show roman and cody got i think the last 20 some minutes give or take with commercials everything else got a chance to breathe more people got a chance to get shown all that kind of stuff so it helped balance the show out a bit on top of that it with the cody bloodline story kind of again not not just being like not uh talked about like when i say pause i don't mean it's just we'll forget about it for a week it just wasn't nothing was advanced really but with that happening it allowed you no know, more storylines to get shine for example something i consider like a second tier within the bloodline storyline is the jimmy j uh feud and the match is gonna happen at wrestlemania and that got a chance to open a show as, as you've seen last week it was like a five man challenge thrown out like a 30 second to a minute answer that was it uh jimmy and jay got to share the ring jimmy said oh everything you've done is because of me you know that kind of stuff jay's like man you know we could be you know, go back to what well, you gotta come over with me and then like they start fighting again it wasn't the longest thing wasn't the most revealing thing but they get they did get a chance to go face to face, flesh it out, all that kind of stuff. The Becky Rhea story got the main event with uh, Becky Lynch fighting Nia Jax in the last woman standing, winning that. So now with two weeks to go, the uh, Becky Rhea w women's world title storyline can finally just be Becky Rhea. No more Nia Jax interference. No more Liv Morgan joining in there. It's now one v one, which which is what the match will be at Mania. Now that it makes no more sense for anyone to interfere and we get them just one-on-one -on -one for two weeks leading to the show of shows. The, uh, Drew and Seth, I'm looking forward to the match. I think it's gonna be a great match. I think the storyline within the match is gonna play out cool. Again, I'll say that for the predictions. But as far as this week, it was kind of 
copy and paste, you know, Drew saying, you know, you have no right being in a bloodline storyline. You know, this that's not your fight. You're taking away from our fight. You know, it's going to cost you. Seth's like, ah, I, can, I can take down the bloodline and whoop your ass same weekend because you ain't you ain't nothing. You ain't nut. It's a lot of what we had. And despite the presumably more time is given, it wasn't nothing was really added. Still excited for the match. Still excited the match is going to bang. But nothing was moved forward this week for it. So again, bloodline, storyline, all that kind of stuff kind of took a back seat. But we did get more clarity on the hope I'm saying this right. The six team ladder match for the tag titles at WrestleMania. Three team the three teams from Raw, not named Judgment Day, qualified and awesome truth, DIY. New Day and the two teams from SmackDown that are going to qualify will be known later this week as recording this video. So that's getting fleshed out. The few that I think benefit the most from honestly The Rock not being there and Roman Cody not taking up too much time is the whole Bailey versus Damage Control, Bailey versus EO Sky for the WWE Women's Title heading into WrestleMania. That got some major time this week with not only. Um, the EO versus Naomi match before the match as EO's uh, music was playing EO showing backstage whooping up on uh, Bailey, taking her out and then coming out which was a bad visual but we got more wrinkles into um, the Bailey side well pseudo Bailey side of things you know Bailey and Naomi were talking Bailey was like thank you so much for help coming out all that kind of stuff. And I was like, oh yeah, you know, it's the right thing to do. Yada, yada, yada. In comes Bianca Belair saying, uh, why are you helping Bailey? Bailey deserves everything she's getting. I'm happy. She told Bailey, I'm happy you're getting, basically I'm happy you're getting your ass kicked. All that kind of stuff. And since Bailey was taken out of nine, basically nine was corner before the Naomi Io match, Io and Damage Control were able to whoop uh, Naomi after a bell which then brings out Bianca to help fend off damage control. Didn't work. They got beat down by numbers game again. So that added wrinkle of Bianca kind of like being forced by her friendship with Naomi to take Bailey's side in this, even though she can't stand her guts because of the two years she was tortured by Bailey and, and damage control, which completely justified. Bailey and damage control were some assholes from like Summerson was at 22 or 21. One up until the last couple of last couple months when Bailey broke off on her own. Bianca's completely justified in how she feels, but it either turns to Bianca joining forces or Bianca going full blown heel and just starting whipping up on everybody's ass because everybody fake and all that kind of stuff. That entire storyline, those wrinkles, those added pieces, those added motivations all came to be this week because again the bloodline took a back seat which is why i think it pro it's probably needed because we we have two weeks ago we know the, the cody bloodline story we know all that at this point we know the um steph drew there's not much else that can really be said we know jimmy J. for the most part uh, i think we're 90 percent there for becca uh becky Rhea. basically there for the tag titles we just got to find out who's fighting and how much judgment day is going to unravel because of this we also got uh, Sammy Guther uh, starting up with Sammy doing, to me it's similar, it may not be, to me it's similar of the, the whole, oh, underdog and does he believe in himself and oh, is he just a lovable loser? And, and I think with Sammy has been done a lot. Now it's a great storyline and people love it, but Again, I'm under the mindset that the better story was Gable Guther. And with Gable even saying this week, Sammy, you know, you can't beat Guther, all that kind of stuff. Um, th th At least there's a story there to go on. Guther being like the, oh, I know I can beat you, blah, 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 blah. So he's like, oh, I have a shot. G. Wilkers. Oh. Hopefully that gets more play. We'll see that uh, come, uh, come to fruition better as we get to Mania. But yeah, Bailey, damage control, EO, oh, that extra time provide wrinkles, the extra time provide, you know, stakes, that extra time provide uh, for Bianco, will will she, won't she, as far as helping Bailey, and all that kind of stuff. So 
the pause of the bloodline was needed and now the rest of the mania card is looking great and we still have i'm sure some matches to go on yeah and uh for those who didn't see it la knight broke into aj St well not he went to AJ, aj styles property and tried to whoop that ass and got arrested by the cops so that's probably something that would have been cut or cut down had the bloodline been there so we got more on that although that story is pretty pretty fleshed out as well so like i said the pause helped it fleshed out the rest of the card i assume we're gonna get some more matches added to help the, make this card great because the top of the card has been built up well built executed pretty well and we're all looking forward to that it's just that other parts there's other parts that maybe needed some uh extra attention that we're going to get i'm looking forward to it i'm looking forward to the where the bloodline cody Rhodes story has in store for this week cm punk is back on monday night raw this week so uh whatever possible wrinkle he could throw into with it whereas with drew has been making drew's been making a killing on cm punk's name with merch or in promos making a killing off cm punk injuring cm punk look forward to that interaction look forward to possible interaction between cm punk and rollins and all that so bloodline thank you for not taking uh like 16 hours this week but it's time to get the uh ball rolling again you're so close to the finish line do not screw it up that's all i had for you guys to, uh this video hope you enjoyed it please like and subscribe and I will, catch, I will catch you guys in the next video. See the recent one? Click somewhere on the screen. But anyway, it's heartfelt on all socials. I am heartfelt. Peace.